is meant for an adult audience. Love line may contain sexually oriented content. Listener discretion is advised. Now, here's Love Line with Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla. Uh, that is my favorite show opening because uh, Engineer Mike has something choreographed like a chunky Raiderette he's moving around in that booth <laughs> looking good. And I meant chunky for a Raiderette, not for a player. You certainly could play nose tackle. 1-800-L-O-V-E-191, 1-800-568-3191, the fax number 310-854-4455. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. He's a board-certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Thank Hello, you. doctor. I put my swizzle stick down Yes, tonight. put yeah. your slobber spatula yeah. down, the thing you flung your disease saliva on me with last night. Very dangerous. Tonight, we have a guest. He's roaming in the halls. He's not feeling well. He's cranky. To tell you the truth, he's been here all day, but he's going to come in in just a few minutes. He's Stan Lee. Now, if you don't know the name Stan Lee, you should, because he is the legendary creator of Spider-Man. The Hulk, Silver Surfer, the X-Men, and other drug-induced, uh, all right, well, I don't want to say, we'll, we'll get into that when we talk to Stan, but Stan has made an incredible living. He's basically, Mar- he is Marvel Comics. He is the guy. Right. Told me he got there in, in the late 30s. I heard him tell you, you that. you can believe that. Yeah. Actually, amazing. 39. And has been there, I guess, he's, is he still there? Well, we're going to find out. Drew, you ever, you ever read any comic books? No. No, me neither. Ever won? No. Me neither. Mm-hmm. I think there's something wrong with people that do. Probably. Is that just me? I watched The Hulk, though. I like that TV show. Oh, I love the TV show. I was always waiting for Bill Bixby's pants to come off, but they never did. They just got shorter and a little tattered at the bottom. <laughs> and he'd go from town to town. He'd get a new job each week. Find a new chick. It was kind of like uh, The Fugitive. Right. A, a, a million TV shows based on that on the run, looking for the guy who did something to them. Right. New job each week. Right. New, new relationship, new job. It's got to be frustrating, actually, if you're unemployed watching the Hulk. This guy picks up a new job, and they're good jobs. He's not sweeping they're, up they're crap. Career, they're careers. Oh, he's like a veterinarian yeah. one week. He's an, he's an airplane pilot the next week. He's working at Cancer Research Lab the following week. Very versatile. We'll miss Bill Bixby quite a yes, bit. Yes, yes. Yes. All right. So should we get to the phones? Let's go. Or do we want to turn to a Bill Bixby tribute show? No. Okay. Sheila? Yes. You're on Loveline. Hi. Hi. Um, my problem is uh, actually pretty in depth. It's pretty hard to talk about. Um, Do your best, Sheila. Well, I am married, and I've been married for uh, eight years. Mm-hmm. And uh, recently, I met a friend, a neighbor, actually of mine, and uh, we started becoming really close friends. And it is a female. Mm-hmm. And um, the subject was broached upon about. Um, her and I becoming lovers, and it was kind of joked about for a while. And well, but by the we, two of you, uh, by the two of us, and by other people, and both of us did speak with our husbands about it and asked them how they would feel if we were to do anything, and they both said they were okay. With huh, it. What? Are you, you sure they weren't talking about borrowing some lawn furniture or something, and there was some confusion? No, no, I'm totally serious. <laughs> Okay. They said that they were okay with it, that they didn't see a problem with it. Oh, come on. And, um, well, now there is. The, you've done something. Well, yes, we have done something. And um, And you've, you've told your respective spouses about it? Yes. Now, yeah. who, whose home field was it on? Um, mine, I believe. <laughs> was it at your house? Yes. Okay, that would fit the home field analogy. Okay, and... Um, <laughs> Where was your husband? At work. Mm-hmm. At work. And her husband? They were they were both at work. Okay. So have they? Re- it wasn't something that we wanted to do in front of them or with them or. All right. So what what has happened now? What's the deal? Well, uh, my actually uh, the girl is on the other line with me. All right. Okay. So. Can we can we speak with her as well? Hi. Hi. What's your name? Peggy. Peggy. Yeah. All right, Peggy. Now, how's your husband reacting? Because we know Sheila's husband's not uh, taking well, too well. My husband hasn't been fine with this. Ever. Oh, no, he was fine with it to begin with. He said he didn't care. 
and that he could You know, I, th- I, I think it. that no. those react. listen, ladies, that reaction has got to be symptomatic of what sort of drive you guys to pursue extramarital relationships. Well, dude, it, whatever, whatever the sex of the person you choose is, your husbands are like completely out of touch with you. You go in and say, you know, I'm going to go kill somebody, and they or whatever, and he's like, oh, fine, That's fine, no problem. Nice. No problem. Uh, yeah. Could you get me a beer yeah. on your way back? I mean, it's not until you actually <laughs> engage in these behaviors, and suddenly, when their ego is involved with it, and their lifestyle is threatened, and their whole, their whole, you know, the, the, what they think of. Exactly the yeah, but I mean, what, what, it's no it's no wonder you guys were pursuing refuge in, in, a, in a real connected relationship. I mean, it doesn't sound like you guys have had a relationship with your husband. They, maybe this woke them up to something. Maybe this will turn out okay for you guys. I mean, you guys, are you guys, the two of you aren't in love, are you? We are. Yes, very Ooh. much. Oh, you are? Yeah. And you want to leave your husbands? We don't want to. Oh. We but... But if that's what it comes down to, then that's what's going to happen. Well, all right. Now, how's it manifesting itself? What are they saying? What are the husbands saying? First of all, her husband pretty much flipped out one day, really freaked out. Yeah. And kind of did some damage to the apartment. And, um, and you know, their problems stem from before us, too. And, I mean, we've come to the realization that evidently... Something was wrong in both of our marriages. All right. Well, that's what Drew was alluding to. That's what I'm telling you. Okay. We, we, we've realized that, in, but we've also we also know that there's something with our marriage that both of us don't want to give up. Okay? Right. But what I I can't my husband can't honestly expect to tell me that it's okay to do this, and now I have feelings for this person, and then to turn around and say, okay, you have to choose either me or her. Is that what he's saying? In a sense, yes. One minute he says he's going to accept and he's going to try, and then another minute he turns around. And well, says, what do you want him to accept? I mean, wh- what are you asking him to accept? I'm asking him to accept our relationship now that it has become one. Mm-hmm. Right, but that's kind of a tall order, isn't it? Right, I mean, it, it, I'm also asking him that if he can't accept it, to make whatever choices he has to make. All right, but, but listen, is this Sheila? Yes. Sheila... You're putting him in kind of a tough position. You know, I mean, you have to decide who is more important, Peggy or your husband, and who you'd rather be with, and you have to go with that person. You have to make the decision. Having him make a decision, which is uh, basically either leave or take a back seat to me and Peggy twice a week, is, is a real awkward position to put a guy in. But not only that, I mean, yeah, it's, there's no doubt he'll leave that kind of circumstance. But you got to remember, you have a commitment with this man. And if, if you have any kids or anything like that, yeah, we have I mean, come on, come on. You know, stay with what's important. Stay with what you value. I understand that your feelings are not being cared for properly and that you have great needs that are being left unmet. I, I understand that. But for crying out loud, do we? Do, does everybody have to keep one eye on the exit door? When you have kids, you have a family, you have commitment, and you just you're gonna you're gonna fly through that door at the first opportunity. I'm no, sorry, this has happened. It's not the first opportunity, opportunity, though, opportunity it's, for either one no, of us. No, it's not. I told you, I've been married for eight years. We've I've gone been married through, for five. We've gone through hell and high water between the two of us. Okay, and now it, the problem started way before Peggy and I ever. Right. Well, we've established that. I'm just saying that it's time to really work on healing that. That that su- pursuing another relationship to try to fix that is not going to help it. And that if you value your children, if you value your family, if you have value in the commitments you make to a marriage, live up to those and work hard at them. And I know it might not be the most pleasant alternative, but I just the way I feel about this. If your husband were a physically abusive or a psychopath or something, okay. But well, I, I haven't heard if that. If they didn't have kids. And if they didn't have kids, I'd say do what you want. But yeah. the kids sort of tip the scales in staying with the husband, even though these guys don't sound like No, uh, of course they don't. But they, but they need any to. Any gifts. But certainly this can be used as leverage perhaps to get them into all treatment. Right, well, get them all going. right. Let's, let's cleanse our minds of this. Now, Stan Lee's just Stan, ever had a lesbian experience, by the way? <laughs> Afraid not, Adam. Really? Because that can be a good thing for a guy. How the hell can a guy have a lesbian experience? I don't know. <laughs> I'm here to ask the hard-hitting questions, though, Stan. I see I'm going to learn a lot on this show. Oh, you certainly are. Now, Stan, you're here. Let, let's not beat around the 
the bush. You got a show coming on tomorrow night, Generation X. Yeah, and everybody better watch it. Let me tell you, it's on Fox. It'll be at eight o'clock at night. Probably the greatest show of all. And because uh, I do talk in superlatives and hyperbole and everything, but well, it's, it's a, a good show. You're a legend. You can and, say whatever you want about yourself. Yeah, and the fella needs the ratings. Come on, guys, watch it, huh? Now, <laughs> is tomorrow um, tomorrow's is the tomorrow the pilot or tomorrow? What do they call that? Is that the pilot? Yeah, well, this is a movie for television. Right. And, and then, if it does very well, they may, it may go to series, right. which I'm sure it will, because it will do well. And this is Generation X is about a bunch of uh, 20-year-old pot smoke and slackers. Is that, <laughs> they're is not, that, do they're I not necessarily that right? 20 years. Now they're a bunch of mutants. Anybody who knows the X-Men series, you know, uh, they, it deals with mutants. Best-selling comics in the world. Because we deal with mutants, too. Well, I think you guys are mutants. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. Mutants are my favorite people. And the deal is, is there's how, how many different characters in it? Well, let's see. There's the villain. That's Matt Frewer, who plays Trash. Now, he's the guy, if you remember um, Max Hedrum. Right. He was Max Hedrum. Okay, the legendary Max and, Hedrum. I mean, need I say more? No, all right. So it's a star-studded cast. Oh, it is. You got it the guy who played is. Max Hedrum in there. <laughs> Come on, this is going to hey, series. Hey, and then we have Finola Hughes, who was oh, in General Hospital. We were just talking about Finola yeah, on the right end. God. In. I mean, everybody talks about Finola. She's, and it, it was shot up in Vancouver, and most of the other cast, the Canadian. They're from Vancouver, and they're really great. They play these uh, mutants, and and I don't want to tell you too much about All right, it. But a lot, a lot of special effects. Uh, oh, sure, sure. You know, if it's a Marvel thing, it has to have special effects. Right. Okay. Now, you, we were talking before, just about twenty minutes ago, and I was confused. I didn't know if you'd actually, you know, you created Spider Man, you created uh, X Men, you created Silver Surfer, but but these were just your ideas, essentially. Right? I mean, you didn't actually draw them. You did the storylines and the writing. Me, you're making me sound so inconsequential. <laughs> I certainly <laughs> am. No, I worked with artists, and we would discuss these things together, and then I would write them, and the artists would draw them. There's a fellow named Jack Kirby, one of the great artists of our time, and he did a lot of them, and Steve Ditko, who did Spider-Man with me, and on and on. Now, did, you had a picture in your mind of what Spider-Man looked like. No, to be very honest, I didn't really. I would describe the power that Spider-Man had and what kind of a person he was. And then the artist, Steve Ditko, he made a lot of different sketches. We looked at them together, and at some point we said, hey, that one looks the most like Spider-Man. But I didn't really have that vision until I saw Steve draw the pictures. All right, I have a new superhero I'd like you to look into. It's, it's loosely based on my life. It's a guy who naps, masturbates, and blames his parents for everything. Is there something you could do with that? Listen, I, I hate to destroy what could be a wonderful idea, <laughs> and I don't want to give you a complex or anything. And uh, I have a feeling if you were to take it to one of our competitors, because I like to play fair, uh -huh. and I think it's time we give one of, the, give one of them a First crack at a good idea like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. We, why should we monopolize all of them? <laughs> yeah, we'll call it uh, a Loafer Boy or something, <laughs> a Hamper Man or something. And I know I'm going to regret in years to come. Oh, it's going to come back and bite you in the ass. It'll yeah. haunt me. There's no doubt about <laughs> it. It'll be a series. Oh, yeah. All right, Stan, we're going to go back to the phones, and we're going to get some bizarre calls, and you're going to help us answer these calls. You're all in a lot of trouble. <laughs> Taylor. I got two questions. Yes. The first question is, I was wondering if acid shows up on a urine test. Not typically. Okay. I'm well, there, as I understand, there are some available. They're not part of the routine screens these days. Okay, like the ones they do in hospitals? Uh, it depends on the hospital. It depends what they're looking for. Well, where does acid well, it, it people can. know when you're on acid. That's it, it, how acid it shows up. It's pre present in such tiny quantities that it's very difficult to detect. I heard that the only way they could do it was a spinal tap. That's one way, but I think there are there are. My understanding is that there are more commercially available urine tests available. Yeah, and and when you're looking for a job like at Taco Bell or something, they may do drug testing, but they probably won't go that far as to give you a spinal tap. Well, but that's a little involved. The, the, that and. You know, unless somebody's having a toxic reaction, acid is not something people are typically screening for because it doesn't cause addiction. All right. Okay? People that do acid often are addicts, but it doesn't – acid is – Taylor, you have a it. second question? Yes. My second question is I've heard that, like, if you drink vinegar or pickle juice, it gets pot out of your urine. Oh, Taylor. Taylor. Taylor, you're smoking pot every day, aren't you? <laughs> Dropping acid, smoking pot. Right? No. Most days? I quit a lot because I got coughed, but – yeah, but, you know, if 
Let me let me ask you my acid test question. The first time you really got high smoking pot, do you remember that time? Mm, yeah. Not not the first time you use it, because sometimes it takes a few exposures to sort of prime the pump. But the first time you really got high, do you remember that? Yeah. What was that like? What did you think of pot the first time you got? Mm, I thought it was great. Great. Uh huh. Can you even more superlative sometimes? Mm, yeah. Put the bong down, Stan. We're trying to do a show. And, he, he, and, and Taylor, I, I could I would predict that you have a parent or grandparent with alcoholism. Yeah. Okay. And see, that that is a recipe. I mean, you're describing marijuana addiction. People with a family history of alcoholism who have a superlative experience the first time they really get high on pot. Most addicts will say, I loved it and continue to love it. And you will pursue it. I'm, I'm sure you did pursue it from that day forth. And now you're only stopping when you get caught. You're beginning to accumulate losses. You're going to screw up your job. You're going to screw up school. You need, you need to take care of this. It, it is it is a subset of people with the biological predisposition for alcoholism that get this. Oh, and uh, let, let's talk about acid for just one second now, Stan. You come up with a lot of real far-out ideas. You know, a lot of these cartoon ideas seem real bizarre. Like like the guy who did Gumby. Do you know that guy's name? I can't recall his name, but I no, heard... I know the st- character. I don't know I heard guy. he did some acid. And that sort of loosened up his mind just enough to come up with, like, Pokey and the Triangle Heads or something. <laughs> do you know how square I am? <clears throat> I know either. what acid is, but when you say do acid, I have no idea. Does that mean drink it, smell it, inject it? I don't even know oh, what do on, don't acid Don't play stupid with that, Stan. I swear you to God. Good. So you, I you, feel so out of the loop right now. You came up with all these ideas uh-huh. totally sober. Yeah, yeah. Completely. And yeah. now, are you, are you getting rich off of this stuff? No, getting, not really. Why not? Only in friendship, only in fun, only in <laughs> enjoy, only in meeting guys like you and learning all about the other side of life. Oh, the dark side. Yeah. Stan. Yes, welcome good. to it, by I the way. I think I'll get ten more comic books out of all this. <laughs> now, now, you were working for what was, well, what would become Marvel Comics That's right. later on at the time. What was the original name? Uh, originally it was called Timely Comics when I went to work there. And you went there in the real late 30s. Yep. And you laid out these ideas. Uh-huh. And they took these ideas. Now, because you were working for them, is it? do they have the rights to those? Yeah. Yeah. So, so you got p- paid as an employee. That's right. But you're not getting the big fat residual chunks. I oh, mean, hey, all, what a, I'm not complaining. They treat me well. I've got a great job and all that. But no, I don't own the characters. They're owned by the company, by Marvel, which is fine. I mean, that's the way it goes. Right. And are you still employed by Marvel? Oh, yeah. I, I hope so. After my performance here tonight, I may go back tomorrow and they're, find out I'm not. They're putting but a I, pink <laughs> slip on your mailbox right now, Stan. Yeah, but as of uh, this afternoon, I think I was working for Marvel. Now, let me ask you an honest uh-huh. question. Let's sure, say I'll give you me an honest have, answer. Let's say you have a tremendous idea, something right. you just know is up there with, with Spider-Man. For instance, uh-huh. like the guy who naps, masturbates, and blames his parents. Let's say you have an idea. It's like a epiphany. You you want to produce this yourself, don't you? You don't want to go into Marvel and have them get their big claws all over it and take their cut, do you? I mean, can yeah, you but ever if they, produce if, stuff if, yourself? If they do it, it makes the company stronger and it makes my job more secure and I'll get a bonus probably. And uh, I have no problem with that. All right, so you're a team player. Yeah, I'm one of these few people left on earth, I think, that's a company man. Wow. All right, we're going to take another quick call. Gus? Yeah. You're on with Dr. Drew and Stan Lee. Hi. Hey. Oh, man, I got a problem. Okay. See, I fell in love with this girl over Christmas when I was on vacation. And uh, her boyfriend at the time, he was on vacation, too, so he wasn't around. Mm-hmm. And uh, they had been together for about a year and a half. And uh, she kind of cheated on with me. We didn't have, I didn't have sex with her or anything like that. But, uh, you know, they broke up when she got, when, you know, her boyfriend got back. And then, uh... Wait a minute. You guys broke up when her boyfriend got back? No, her and her present boyfriend broke up. See, I wasn't going out with her at the time. Okay, no, wait a minute. She had one boyfriend out of town. Drew, are you... Drew, pay attention. I I don't get it. (laughs) All right, she has one boyfriend who's out of town. Yeah. She has another boyfriend that's in town. Yeah. And then there's you. No, okay. He is the in-town boyfriend. Uh, Her boyfriend was, was out of town. Right. And I just came into town. And so, like... I was just kind of, you know... Fooling around with her. Yeah. You didn't consummate the relationship. Right. And so when he got back, they broke up. And then I came back to, uh, you know, I went back home after vacation and everything. And, uh, you know, I wrote her letters and called her and everything like that because we live pretty far away. And uh, 
And then she started going back out with him. And then she said it was just because she needed somebody there because, you know, she's feeling real lonely and everything like that. Right. And she didn't want her bed to lift off the floor, so right. she had to weight it down. <laughs> so. Yeah, all right. Gus, come on. Stan Lee's sick and he's tired. He's, 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 he's got one foot in the grave over here. You better hurry up. No, I'm fascinated right. oh, by fascinated? it. I can't imagine how this is going to end, what the problem is. <laughs> it, may, it may not end. Okay. It's going to end in a commercial if you don't hurry, Gus. Right. What the hell is he saying? <laughs> that was God. All right, so. Then uh, they started going back out with each other, and she said even though that uh, they were going out, that she didn't want to lose touch with me. And then, you know, they went out for about a week, and then she called me, and she said she'd lost her virginity to him. Right. And so she called me a couple days ago, and she said that um, she didn't want me to call her a writer anymore because she said it would hurt him too much. Yeah. And so I guess what all right. All right. Stan, I got an idea for you. <laughs> no, I can't make a comic I got out a, of no, this. It's, I, it's called I'd like Confused to. Adolescent. It's called, it's a guy, all right, he was an auctioneer, and he got fired. And he's a teenage <laughs> auctioneer, and now he had some sort of brain trauma. He was dropped as a child. He became an auctioneer. He got fired from, from his auctioneer job, and now he just calls radio stations and rambles aimlessly. Do you think you could do something with that, Stan? You thought that was aimless. You should read some of the scripts that are submitted. It to us, but you cut him off at the best part. He said that if he got, if he called her, her boyfriend, it would it would offend the boyfriend, and right. that kind of I found very interesting. Yeah, we're going to be back <laughs> with Drew. Me, you guys Stan. do this all the time. Oh, you, yes. you listen to this. You're great doing it stuff too. All. We're going to lock the door. I tell you, no wonder you don't want to go home. We'll be back with all more right. Spider Man after this. CEO, sitting at home in his one-bedroom apartment in Van Nuys, cranking out some sort of high-tech BS. <laughs> I miss that. I mean, that that sounded like you, you had like a 40-piece orchestra in on that thing. <laughs> it was one guy with a, <laughs> a lot of noise. <laughs> <laughs> don't screw with me, Stan. No. Uh, no, I don't know. <laughs> Do you have any part of, uh, of, of the mean, music? No, no. I'm tone deaf anyway. I, when I went to school as a kid, they had something called the listener's row. If you couldn't carry a tune, you had to sit in that row. Oh, right. I sat there all through school, and I was threatened with instant expulsion if I sang one note while the class was singing. I could throw the whole class off key. <laughs> well, Stan, <laughs> when I was uh, in junior high and PE, I was in the donkey squad. <laughs> that was for the guys who had the boxer shorts hanging out of the gym shorts who couldn't uh, tie their shoes correctly and... Uh, Thank you, Mike. That voice was, uh, well, that was a donkey brain. But before that, that was legendary uh, comic book creator Stan Lee. I'm Adam Carolla. I'm not legendary at anything. And there is Dr. Drew over here. Let me give the phone numbers out, 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Fax numbers, 310-854-4455. And Stan, uh, so Stan was upset that we cut that last caller off. Oh, yeah. When he started out by saying, I've got a real problem. I mean, my heart just went out to But his problem is he was <laughs> scatterbrained. Well, his problem is also that he doesn't want to see the reality that, that his, the relationship is over and his girlfriend is with her boyfriend. And she's trying to get rid of him any way she can. And, and all the while, just keeping him strung along b before she actually committed to her present boyfriend, keeping him just there sort of in case, well, we in her get, pocket. We get these calls every night where the, a guy or a girl... And, just and doesn't want to accept the reality. This is not exclusive to any one gender. Either no. gender can be is, is equally uh, capable of being screwed over and lying to themselves. It goes back to the stuff we were talking about last night, particularly insofar as it affects women. They all, they're se seeking intimacy... And they will tend to compromise themselves in order to attain that. Is 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 low esteem the key element in this? Yeah, yeah, it's it's what makes people perhaps pursue it with uh, more gusto. Yeah, with more pathology. You know, they do it when they shouldn't and pursue it. You know, compulsively because they they feel so bad. It's the only way they can validate themselves. Stan, you married man? Yeah. 
been married for a lot of years, or no, do you no, have one of those trophy not wives? More than forty, about forty-eight years. About forty-eight. Yeah, years. We're going to stay with it until we get it right. <laughs> now you. Uh, Oh, jeez, I'm not going to do the math. What year did you guys <laughs> get married? I think 47. Yeah, but you don't say, I think, when you're talking to your wife, do you? you say 47. Uh, yeah, no, neither of us have any memories at all about dates. <laughs> so, could you imagine? And and you're still in love. Oh, she's great. I mean, she's the greatest woman in the world. Yeah. And, and you met her when you were... Well, you know, you asked if I drew before. <clears throat> I didn't draw comic strips, but I used to draw cartoons just for myself. <clears throat> Excuse me, I got a bad cold. And um, when you draw, usually you draw. You love to draw girls' faces. And there was one face I always drew, my idea of the idolized pretty girl. Mm -hmm. When I met my wife, she had this face that I was drawing as a cartoon all my life. I couldn't believe it. Oh, you didn't just put paper on her face and no, then sketch hardly. around it. <laughs> so I wouldn't let her get away. <laughs> wow, so you'd created this image, and then you'd actually seen the female manifestation of yeah, it. It was really incredible. In fact, I almost feel I created her. <laughs> hey, could, could you draw me up a date for this weekend, Stan? <laughs> I'll see lonely. what I can do. <laughs> All right, let's take a question for All Stan. Right. Matt, Yeah. you have a question for the legendary Stan Lee? Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, um, uh, do you feel that uh, when Jack Kirby died that that changed Marvel and all? Well, I don't know that it changed Marvel, but it certainly was a loss for the entire comic book industry. Jack was one of the absolute all-time greats, and um, it, it changed everything for everybody because we'll never have any more of his artwork around, and, and that's a tragedy. Now, he drew all those... He drew everyone, right? Well, not everyone, oh, yeah. but he drew a great deal of them. He drew... Um, let's see, he worked with me on the Fantastic Four, the Mighty Thor, Sergeant Fury... The Avengers, the X Men, um, all and, that. Uh, there might have been another one, I, I, but those were the big ones. All right, is that it, Matt? Yeah. No, well, I got a comment. <clears throat> the, that uh, Marvel Action Hour. What were you thinking? <laughs> 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 you, you mean when I did the um, introductions, or for the show itself? I, I hung up on him because I didn't like the cut of his jib, Stan. I thought he took a jab at you there. <laughs> well, the Mar no, no, that, I can take it. And the Marvel Action Hour, when it first started in syndication, it wasn't the greatest animated show in the world. But we now have a new team doing it, and I think it's a lot better. You had guys like Stick Figure Man. Oh, you you were in there, <laughs> were you? You son of a gun. I got a fax for you here, Stan. What the heck is going on with Wolverine? Any new cool plans for him? Yeah, but I'm not going to divulge them in front of everybody. Some of our competitors may be listening, and they'll try to beat us to it. You know, we always have new cool plans at Marvel, and the newest, coolest thing, and I'm so glad you let me segue into this, of course, is tomorrow night at 8 o'clock oh, when yes. you're going to have a chance to watch Generation X on TV on Channel 5, and oh, are you going to thank me for it? Wait, no, Dan, that, I no, thought you were sick. <laughs> I'm but never no, too he, sick for he, that. He comes to life when he's plugging his project, though, doesn't he? No, having a cold isn't sick. It just makes my voice even he's worse than it is. He's a lung up when it comes to help and love line, but I, when he's plugging his own gig, he has no problem. Wait, I'm trying to remember. I think it's called, yes, it's called Generation X, and let me think. Yes, I think the network is Fox. It's the Fox, Fox network. Is it 8 o'clock? That's a good guess. Across eight the country? Or, or just I believe so. I, I believe so. And it's tomorrow night, Tuesday night. All right, so watch that. Now I can go home. No. <laughs> because you said it four times, you have to stay... If, 15 minutes for every time you said Generation X. We're going to go back to the phones. Drew, you got one you like? Uh, yeah, this one. Okay. Robert? Hey, what's up, dude? Hey, dude, you're on Loveline. Adam? Yes? What's up? Hey. hey. What's up, Dr. Drew? Hey, Robert. Hey, Stan? Hey. What's up? Oh, very little right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's an older guy. <laughs> right, I'm going to make this quick as possible. All right, Doc. Um, yeah. On the eighth, I had surgery on my back for L four five set or yeah L four five. Mm -hmm. Since then, I've been on Percocet, Vicodin, mm, ES, yeah. Motrin eight hundred millimeter milliliter. <laughs> oh yeah, you're on it. Yeah, oh yeah, dude. Check it out. You, you'll definitely know. What else you take it besides opiates? Uh, Valium ten millimeter. What else? And then there's like three uh, muscle relaxer things. What else? I have no idea what. What else? What else you taking? But okay, I'm a daily pot smoker. What else? Right? Say? I smoke me. Okay, I, well, anyway. Uh, okay. what, were you at one time a heavy alcohol user too? Um, at one time, but right. I only using else besides anything else besides pot? Yes, yeah, speed. Right. 
Okay, that that about rounds it out. Yeah, pretty much. That's about it. You then you're 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 a real. It's actually, Robert. I'm sorry, but it's a typical case. It is, is a it really? real typical case. And really, uh, to be like this guy's like a medicine cabinet. Yeah, but it, it is. It it ultimately is going to be the the story of opiate dependency. Really. And uh, unless you clean up, two things are gonna are gonna happen. One is, you're gonna have real trouble getting your back to heal. Right. Because uh, the speed, particularly in the marijuana, you know what? When I do speed, it it kills the pain. What, what's up with that? Speed has opiate type properties, and there may be people out there that disagree with me on this. But I I have seen people using heavy speeds, like you know, grams and grams a day, uh-huh. who will have the same withdrawal syndrome that people get from heroin. Plus, you can re-injure your back when you when you're being cuffed and pushed into the back of the squad well, car. Uh, here's yeah. the real problem. The, the real problem here is that that. All these drugs tend to reinforce the reward centers in your brain in such a way as to perpetuate pain. Okay. There's sort of a pain reward cycle that opens up, and, and no, nobody fully understands it. But unless you clean up, you're going to have chronic back pain. It's, it's hard to clean up. I'm sure, yeah. Robert. Th- therein is you, you, uh, that's where I feel for you because you're right. It is hard. But and if you uh, really want to do it, there, there's a lot of treatment out there for okay, you. Okay. Um, I also got one quick question. Um, methadone. What? No, I, I would see. I am. No, 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 I'm just. I'm just saying this. A friend of mine. Yeah, I'm, I get stuff from sometimes. Um, I might do some. What does meth? What would methadone do to someone who's never done heroin or anything like that? Methadone life? will just replace your Percocet. It's a longer acting oral opiate. The the horrible thing about methadone is it takes up to two months to withdraw from. It's like having a two month heroin withdrawal. I am not a fan of methadone. There are circumstances where it must be used, and I understand that, but I'm not a fan of methadone. God, the guy was like Keith Richards. Dave. Hello. You're on Love Line with Stan Lee. Hi. How's it going? Happy Chinese New Year's to everyone. That's right. It is. Today. Thank you. Yes, it's the year of the rat. <laughs> hey, that was good thinking. For Christ's sake, couldn't they get something cute? Something like a panda bear or something? A rat. <laughs> it's the year of the rat. That was fine planning by the Chinese folks. <laughs> okay, my question is. I like my girlfriend to uh, suck my anus. Oh, yes. And uh, I was wondering if there are any adverse effects for me or her. <laughs> Stan? Oh, I've just way, left. <laughs> Stan's on the 405 right now. <laughs> you want to know if there's any adverse effects for her? I For her? Wait a minute. She wants you to do that to her. No, no, she does it to me. Oh, she does it? All right. And I want to know if there are any adverse effects for me or her. All right. For you, nothing. You're king of Anusville. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, The adverse effects for her could just be self-esteem problems later on in life. And when she eventually gets married and gets drunk and divulges to her new husband what she used to do to you, uh, you... Maybe even like a like a like a like a red butt from where he smacks her. I don't know, Drew. It matters. Uh, Drew's Drew's hung his head in shame. He doesn't want to be part of the show. Well, let me explain about this uh, region. No, no, wait. I, I will talk. If, if, if you're gonna if you're gonna just go off on it, I will talk. Whenever I put the lab coat uh, no, no. on, Drew comes no, no. back to I, life. I will talk. I will talk. Um, Dave. Yeah. I, I don't even know even know how to address questions like this, except that. There is obvious potential for exchange of body fluid. Any sexually transmitted disease that happens to be present, certainly you could contact. Uh, There are what we call oral fecal transmitted diseases of various types in this country, and they're not very common, but certainly uh, she would be at risk for those. Uh, Stan, I just came with another one. Heine man, (laughs) a guy who's fixated with people's rectums. I think you've just put our entire company out of business. <laughs> we'll be back with more Love Line after this. Hey, this is Pat Boone. You and I are listening to Love Line with Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla. I did like Pat Boone. And I want to thank Mike for putting that drop in after that lovely call we had before commercials. Just it's gonna equalize things out. Reminded me that we did have Pat Boone here and he was okay with this. Pat Boone the great equalizer and the, the story I enjoyed most about Pat Boone's visit is when he said he had to kick a little ass out on his driveway one day when some crazed uh, Debbie Boone fan showed up one right. day. I just asked him if he ever kicked any ass just just as sort of a joke question, but as it turned out <laughs> Even Pat's got to roll up the sleeves of the bad golf jacket every once in a while and stomp a little booty. Let me get the phone number out, 1-800-L-O-V-E-191-1800. 
568-3191. Fax number 310-854-4455. Stan Lee has left the building, but his legend lives on. Tim. Yeah. You're on Loveline. Okay. Hey. Uh, hi, Adam. Hey. Uh, yeah, I would like to say you are hilarious. I'm your biggest fan. Oh, thank you. And uh, is... you know, I'd love to meet you. Um, hey. Yeah, my question is, uh, uh, I, would, I was wondering how come, uh, uh, like, girls, uh, how come they moan more than uh, guys do? Well, girls moan and guys have that. You know, like I'll tell you my rap. Here's my rap, and then Drew, Drew will tell me his, and and Ann, we can get producer Ann to give her input. Maybe, uh, maybe Mike too. Mine is, <clears throat> oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. And it's good to work the name in every once in a while too. You know, yeah, uh, Sheila, yeah, oh yeah. You know, because moaning is sort of, it's a little. <laughs> Who's keeled over? Moaning is kind of, I think, I don't know, it's a little feminine or something for guys. I mean, you wouldn't want to be there and be like going, ooh, it's kind of like a deliverance type thing, you know? I, it's not macho. You know what I mean? Uh, um, who am I thinking of? Barry White? Barry White would not moan. He'd go, oh, yeah. <laughs> so are, are you a moaner or are you a talker? Uh, I'm a talker. Yeah, women like it when you talk to them. Yeah, I know they do. They do sexually. I mean, not you know they don't they don't want to talk about you know magic's comeback or, or Bosnia or anything like that. But they like a little sex talk. Like and, what, Adam? And I, well, first I throw. Hey, Anne, I mean, are you gonna pe- what? Okay, what kind of talking? No, Anne. Why do you ask him questions? No, because like I'm that? curious. No, what come does he on, tell a story why? or uh, what do you? <laughs> no, oh, yes. maybe you're the hottest thing I've ever seen or what? No, I'll. I'll you want you want my yeah, rap? No, please. Oh yeah. yeah no. Hey, hey, hey Drew, Drew, shut up! I'll give my rap. So obviously, uh, Anne hasn't had some Get in a while. Get me going, Adam. <laughs> All right, I start like this. I give a little prelude to what's coming. You know what I mean? I go. You know what I'm gonna do. I'm going to when I'm done with you, I'm going to grab a handful of your hair. See, now, grab the handful of the hair, Tim, and get your mouth right by their <laughs> ear, right? <laughs> and crack a whip every once in a while. It helps to have somebody smoking in the room, and you can whip it right, whip that cigarette right out of their mouth. But you give them that, you give them that itinerary, that sexual itinerary. And when I'm done with you like this, I'm going to turn you around this way, and I'm going to do it like that for a while. And then when I'm done doing it that way, I'm going to put you on top and I'll make you, and, you know, then go back to the rap. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then when I'm done with that, and then right in the middle of that, go, ah, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> and then go. And then the rap goes into, <clears throat> I'm going down to the uh, circle. K. Okay, you want anything? Tim? Yeah. That's the rap. Yeah, okay. And I got a quick comment. Uh, I was, I, I wanted to say uh, that uh, I miss. Yeah. You're on Love Line. Nothing. What's up, Dr. Drew? Hey, Paul. Hey, how you doing? Um, I was just wondering, you know, is it like, okay, when me and my girlfriend, we have sex, she, like, often, like, her hands tend to wander and touch herself, and I was wondering if, if I'm doing something wrong, or... What's she touching? Like, you know... <laughs> People have little... Or no concept that they're actually on the radio. Or yes. that they live in the United States, for that matter. Paul, you cannot use that kind of language on the air. No, it can kind of slip. Okay, Paul, listen. Why aren't you doing stuff to her parts? Well, I am. It's, I've never had this problem with girls before. It just... Well, why is it a problem? Well, I don't know if, if, if it's like normal for girls to do that or... or... Yeah, see, I don't. I wouldn't take offense to it. I would look at it as you're pushing a car. They're jumping out and helping you. That's all. Don't look at it. Don't look at it as like you making a toast. Like you're the best man at some wedding. You're getting up, and taking a toast, making a toast, and someone comes up next to you and grabs the mic and tries to put their two cents in. I wouldn't look at it that way. It's a team effort. You're trying to achieve a, a mutual goal. That's her pleasure, right, Paul? She knows what she likes. She's not necessarily saying you don't. She's just saying well, she knows, too, and she's going to help herself. I don't think you should take offense to that. So it, it's, it's normal for girls to touch themselves? Yeah, I think a lot of them do do that. I've never been with any, but 
I'm sure they do. And, you know, guys can't really do that because they got one part, pretty much. And hopefully, if everything's going right, that part is being used. So it's not like a guy can, like, it's not gonna, like, Drew, you never, like, licked your pinky and put it on your nipple or anything, did you? No? <laughs> All right, Drew, come on. It's time to join the living. Love. Hello. You're on Loveline. How are you? Well. Good. Um, I have been a vegetarian ever since I was 14 years old. Mm-hmm. And my menstrual cycle is really irregular. The last time I had my period was December 20th. Where are you from? I'm Vietnamese. A Vietnamese? Yeah. Oh, okay. Is Love your, your Vietnamese name? No, it's not. Oh, okay. How long has it been since you had a period? Um, the last time I had it was December 20th. Have you lost weight? No. How much I've do you... I've been 100 pounds ever since I can remember. And you're 6'2"? No, I'm 5. Okay. And you recently became vegetarian? No, I became a vegetarian when I was 14. 14. So five years ago, and you're wondering, now is it affecting your periods? Yeah. I, well, I... actually, it's been affecting my period. Ever since I had my period, your, your period. So many things can affect your period. Well, you don't. If you if you've been the same way ever since you started having periods, you can't really tell, can you? No. I mean, it's normal for some women to have very irregular periods. On top of that, almost anything. I mean, the way the wind's blowing can can affect your periods and how long they are between cycles, and you know how how heavy they are, how much pain you have with them. Changes mm-hmm. in your diet, changes in medication, changes in your activity level and your weight, exercise, sexual function. All these things will affect your, potentially can affect your, your period. Okay? And also, um, does my chance of getting pregnant is less than other women? No. No? No. Because I was told by my doctor that it is. Well, it, may, it depends. Are, are you, do you have endometriosis or ovarian cysts or something else? Um, no. Well, it could potentially be a sign of something that can... That can impact on fertility but i would not take it as such I right really you mean <clears throat> you mean she thinks she has a less chance of getting pregnant because she's a vegetarian because she has irregular periods oh because she has irregular periods and Which she's blaming is... that on the vegetarian no. thing no. gabrielle it's not coming up oh i didn't do that right oh okay well, we'll put her on hold and we'll go there. to chrissy hi hi how are you You're on love line hi hey um my question is I have an 11-year-old son, and he has, like, you know, 11-year-old friends and everything, and they're all just like him, a bunch of 11-year-old dorks, right? Right. But he has... Nice way to think of your son, by the way. (laughs) Oh, you just don't understand. He's, like, obsessed with farts and stuff. Hey! (laughs) Come on, cut the guy a little slack. He'll grow out of it. I hope so. I I don't think so. (laughs) He could grow up and be Adam. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) That's true. Oh, that's a scary Yes, it's time to have the boy quarantined and put under evaluation right away. <laughs> no, but my my question is not necessarily with him. You know, I mean, he has all his other friends, you know, and they're just like more kids. And he just he has this one friend who is like his age, and he makes me feel uncomfortable. You know, he like the way he looks at me is like a guy looking at me. Right, he's eleven. Yeah, and he's looking at you with the eyes of a uh, of a twenty-year-old, of like uh, the guy who played the Bachelor and the Flying Nun. I don't know. I don't remember that. <laughs> I don't know what that guy's name was. That rich, good-looking Bachelor guy who always donated to the convent. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, he just—he came over yesterday, you know, to see my son. And he wasn't here, and so I just told him he's not here, he's wherever he was, you know. And he just kind of stood there looking at me, you know. He's like a little shorter than me, but not much. And he's just like looking at me. All right, but but Chrissy, wait a minute. What the hell are we supposed to do with this question? I don't know. Have him killed. Drew, what's your take on this? He, he's obviously having sort of an early puberty, and so, well, so he's, he's eleven. But but he's probably having real urges and real, you know, he doesn't want to handle the feelings he's getting. Well, and my, I know my son's masturbating at eleven. Really? Yeah, yeah. It can happen. Yeah. With hair gel. With hair gel. Yeah, I had to have a talk with him. It was hard. Yeah, it's getting expensive. Well, not to mention, you know, he could get an infection or something. Can we, uh, Chrissy, put, let, let me talk to this lad. He's not here. Oh, no, my son's in bed. Oh, he's in bed? Yeah, it, it, he's got to go to school in the morning. 
But no, I just, I don't know how to deal with this other boy. I mean, he's never said anything. You don't get me wrong. It's just the way he looks at me. Totally different. You ever smell any uh, hair gel coming from his crotch? No. Okay. <laughs> it just disappeared really quick. There was a big blob of it in the toilet. I'm talking to Adam, honey. <laughs> All right, let me talk to the lad. No, this is my boyfriend. I can't wake him up and say... Oh, that's your boyfriend? Yeah. Tell your boyfriend to kick this guy's ass. He's been eyeballing you. Oh, Adam says we should kick Cameron's ass. He's eyeballing No, you got... Let, let, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Let's have a little reality testing here, ladies and gentlemen. This is an 11-year-old. Yeah, he is. Which is Many fine. people would kind of look upon this as cute. This is his first... It is kind of cute. Right, this, was, this is his first impulse of this kind and you're you're the object of it you you want to make this a positive experience for him and so set the appropriate limits keep propriety you know constantly in your in in uh, you know in, in the front of your mind when you're dealing with him make him understand what is and what is not appropriate interaction with a woman and that's it i say you take this guy to chuck e cheese you split a picture of mr pib and you talk it out Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191, 1-800-568-3191, fax number 310-854-4455. Drew, any faxes there worthy? Really? No. I kind of tell you no. All right. Sorry. We need some better faxes. All right. And not that uh, there's anything wrong with these, but we only, we want the cream of the crop. We don't want the crop. We don't want the... Uh, we want the heart of the artichoke. Do you know what I'm saying? Right, we want the good we stuff. We don't want the spiny leaves around the outside. I'm going to whip up some mayo. Mm -hmm. Drew's going to melt a little butter. I'm ready for the the. Where are we going with this? <laughs> what are you? What are you? You just. We you're... are killing time, and I'm getting hungry. All right. We're going to go back to the phones in just a second, but first this. All right. Name of the show, Love Line. My name, Adam Carolla. His name, Dr. Drew. He's a board-certified physician and Dixon Madison specialist. And Gabrielle. Yes. How are you? Oh, I'm doing good. How about you guys? Good. You're on Love Line. Um, I have a quick question for you guys. Mm -hmm. um, I have a 31-year-old boyfriend. I'm 22. Mm -hmm. We've been dating for like three years. Well, yeah. A little over three years now. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, we went through all the bowl of cheating on each other in the beginning of the relationship. Now we're not doing right. That anymore. All right, you got it out of the way. Very yeah. wise. Basically, if we ever got married, we'd know how to handle it because we've already went through it. <laughs> right. So you're saying you get married, and then when you cheat on each other, once you're married, you're already prepared to deal they with. They know it. how to handle that. You have the tools. Yeah, exactly. It's well, like, it's, we've it's already went through it all. Wonderful planning. Yeah, it's like it's like you've been stranded on the side of the road before. This time, you got some jumper cables and a flare in the trunk. You're ready. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, well, make a long story short. Well, we don't live together because he doesn't agree with living with the girl until he's married. Well, he's very old-fashioned, except for the cheating part. Well, uh, well, we don't do that no more. That was a long time ago. But um, I'm not concerned about that right now. But my problem is that we only have sex maybe once every two weeks now. And mm -hmm. he's always saying, oh, well, maybe it's my age or I just don't have the drive anymore or... Excuses like I'm too tired or is he on medication? I'm too no. He has asthma, but that's the only thing he takes is asthma medication. Does he do drugs? No, he doesn't do. He doesn't even drink. Okay, maybe he should start. <laughs> Could that help, Drew? No. no, he he used to he he's um before I met him he used to drink really bad when he got a divorce. He he used to what? Drink really bad before when he got a divorce. How long did did he drink for? Huh? How long did he drink for? <sighs> I wasn't with him when he was doing that. Um, like a, a decade, ten years? No, about three years. He was drinking. I all right, all right, Let, all right. We're not going to attribute it to anything chemical. Yeah, well, I know that, but he's he's always making excuses like I'm too tired or I can't do it because we always fight a lot or um, I'm stressed out right now. I can't, and I'm just like. Okay, listen. It's an emotional thing. When guys don't want sex, if it's not because of some sort of medication, they're on. Uh -huh. It's an emotional thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I now, guess. now he says he's not. He says it's not that he's not attracted to me. It's just he says that it just 
He doesn't feel like it. But it gets, I mean, it goes up. I mean. It works. It has no, yeah, it has no problem. I mean, the elevator goes to the penthouse? Huh? Okay, fantastic. Nobody understands me. I don't even understand me. No, I mean, it. His does, but hers I doesn't. Mean, Really? I need to be graphic or anything, but if I'm in the bed and it works, he still will say no. And it's like, I don't, I get frustrated and I'm just like, fine. I get pissed off and I roll over on the other side of the bed. I'm like, leave me alone then. All right. This guy does not want to be intimate with you. Is he having trouble being intimate other than the sexual part? No, he hugs me, kisses me, calls me little pet names that we do. Um, he says he loves me all the time. I mean, stuff like that has no problem. It's just when you're in the bed he's not a night person i'm not a morning person he's a morning person i'm not some there's information (laughs) missing you're fat no stop stop Uh, yeah that that's what yes stop it could it be that gabriel um well yeah because i want it mostly at night and he doesn't want it at night he's like i'm too tired Uh, he gets cranky at night and then the morning when he wants and i'm like no leave me alone all right listen gabriel (laughs) here's what you need to do are you listening? Yeah, I'm listening. You need to ask him what the deal is because you are hugely concerned. Now, and as a guy, he is going to try to skirt this question as best he can. He is going to try to sidestep it. Because I've asked him, and yeah, he does that. He yes. Sidesteps it. And yes. It's like he's well, going to try to do it, sidestep it like a freaking matador. But you have to be, you have, to, you have to be a bigger bull than he. You have to you have to confront him. You have to find out what it is. And I'll bet that he probably doesn't know. Possibly. When guys get this way, they don't know. I mean, I've been this way in relationships. He, said, he goes, I really he goes, I really don't know what it is. He goes, Maybe it's my age. He goes, Maybe it's just stress. He they're goes, they're attracted to you. Yeah. You know what though? He's pulling away. What did it turn out to be in your situation? Huh? Adam. Me? Yeah. I had a splinter in my penis. No other than that. <laughs> Uh, I mean, you I, would think. Hang on, hold on. Hey, Gabriel. Hey, hey, Gabriel. Okay. Can we call you Gabby? Well, I guess. I'll okay, find. then. <laughs> yes, we'll call you Gabby. Uh, what happened to me, to be quite honest, was is I was finished with the relationship and right. didn't know it. You see? Emotionally. So I was sort of like pulling away right. physically. Right. And then I was still keeping up with the, hey, schnuggums, right, and, right, and right. being nice because I was almost compensating right. for the fact that I was sort of pulling away right. emotionally. And, and, and indeed, you know, that, that physical in- encounter can create a – it can cut through a lot and create an intimacy that you might not have been comfortable with at the time. So the intimacy, you were withdrawing the true intimacy and sort of creating this cover-up uh, that, that sounded like intimacy, a, but a it wasn't. A thin veil of yeah. intimacy. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes, I was doing that. So, Gabby, mm-hmm. he could be uh, withdrawing from you, and I would look into that. Because of all the fighting and stuff? Yeah. For, for a million, and it could be because he's a guy. But look into it. You're going to have to talk to him. Ask him. The girls are the ones that hold out. Gabby, tell him it feels like he's pulling back, and you want to know why. So there. So. (laughs) Are we going to do this a new way now? Oh yes, I'm sorry. No, no, because that was that. All right, all right, Drew, you're gonna (laughs) you're gonna finish each each call with so there. All right, right? right. that's our new love line policy. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk, and when I'm done talking, after I am, you go. So there. So that's it. So that's it. Angie. Hi. You're on Loveline. How are you doing? Good. <laughs> so there? So there. Yeah, so there. Not so yet. that's Not it. Yet. Not yet. Okay. All right. I'm cool. Angie. Yeah. What's going on? I was just wondering, you know, the old standards of, you know, what was the perfect woman don't exist anymore. And I want to know, since you're two guys. What is a perfect woman? All right, hold on. Obviously, it's not, you know. Wait a minute. Drew's got a, is it, so this is a male question? Yeah. Drew has to run out to the car and get his testicles out of the glove box. <laughs> <laughs> Take the lab coat off, Drew. Screw the nuts on. <laughs> so that's it. Sounds you're, like fun. You're like uh, J.J. Arms. <laughs> so that's it. All right. You want to, you want to. So there. Yeah, so you want to know what men are looking for. I want if to anything, I want to be dominated. Like, Stop it. <laughs> school she was a little bit taller than me bigger boobs than me uh-huh she was blonde hair and i'm a small person 
I'm like 34, 23, 35. I'm about 5'6 now, but I was like 5'4 all the way through high school. Right. All right. We have the dimensions of everyone in your graduating class. Continue. Yeah. <laughs> and now we know the laugh problem, yes? And I just want to know, you know, it's like, why are guys going after these big-breasted women? I mean... I've got it all there. I can when give I'm you two 40, reasons. When I'm 40 years old, they're not going to be at my knees. You know, it doesn't make sense to me. The guy ain't going to be there to scoop them up either. <laughs> you think guys, you think guys, are, wait, give me that laugh again. <laughs> hmm. That could be part of the problem, Angie. <laughs> my laugh? Well, you, you know, guys can be pretty. Enough. I'm not blonde enough. Is this the problem? No, it's just that, that huge uh, escape of wind when you laugh. It's very breathy. Guys can be very uh, particular about a woman's laugh. Angie? Yes? Guys like big boobs for the same reason they like big cars, big buildings. Guys like big. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's how guys, a lot of guys are. But wait a minute. Let me straighten something out. I'm going to be honest. No, Ann, Ann's got a puss on. She's got her hand raised. Let me, Ann, just give me one second to, to get myself out of this grave that I've dug. And then we're gonna we're gonna get producers and Anne's feminine viewpoint on this. Now she's okay. gi- she give me a, a another. I just point. had a comment. Okay, you go like ahead. Big butts. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't catch that. I'm sorry. Anne wanted to know if I liked big butts. Touche, Anne. Yes. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, Mike. Let's uh, let's shut Anne's mic off from now on. Uh, no, not all guys like big boobs. I swear to you they don't. Now, women think that every guy likes big boobs, but and I do. So as a big boob fan, I try to get my fellow men to join me in my big boob quest, and oftentimes they will not. They say no. I show them some big boobs, and they go, too big. And I go, what do you mean too big? Because too big is like, to me, is like saying too good, and I don't understand that. And they go, no, it's too big. I don't, I like them. They like nice shape. They like nice form. They'll, you'll hear guys say, oh, she's got perfect boobs. Not 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 too big, but perfect, you know, perfect shape. So it's not all just about size. Okay. Although it is with me. But it's <laughs> not that way for most guys. So don't fixate okay. on the boobage problem. I'm curious, you know, as to not so much fixating on the boobage problem, as you call it, but just, you know, what is considered, you know, the standard now. You, know? you mean the physical standard? That's what you're totally preoccupied with? No, I'm just curious. I mean, I'm asking. I mean, if that's your preoccupation, guys, it's yeah. going to be a very, very sad. Uh, I'll tell you right now. I mean, when you talk to people, they're not going to come out and say, you know, you're on the radio going, okay, ask me a question, I'll answer it. You know, you're not going to get that from a lot of people unless you know them well enough to say, well, what do you think? Did you get that? No, I'm thinking it's 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 the uh, it's the way I, I think it's your rhythm of speaking and your laugh that is doing it so far. Don't blame the chest. I'm not blaming the chest. All right, so you're attractive. Yeah. You got a train running through your living room. No. If that's Amtrak, a run, track. baby. I live near a train track. All right, Angie. Yes. Move away from the tracks. Walk proud. And stop obsessing over your chest. I mean, you need you need to find valued pursuit in your life and things that are important to you. That I'm are, just curious about this question. I really don't think about this every day of my life. I think the the fact is though that that guys, especially as you as you're getting older here, guys are not going to be as preoccupied with these physical ideals. There's, that's going to be a, important. You know, it's going to be an issue. But there's going to be a lot more that people are going to begin looking for. Let me add to that very quickly. There are plenty of decent guys out there. There really are. The problem is, as the girls would like Lorenzo Lamas to be one of the decent guys. Lorenzo Lamas is not one of the decent guys. And I don't mean to bash Lorenzo, but he's 6'2". He's got big biceps, long hair, and he's going to go chase bikinis because that's what he can do. There are plenty of guys out there, maybe thinning a little up top. Maybe a little gut, maybe not the physical specimen that you would like, but they revere women, they know how to treat a woman, and a lot of the time the women don't look at them for answers. There are guys out there who would love to love you, and you cannot fixate on the ones who won't and then complain about it. Kirsten. Hi. Hi. 
Um, I have something I wanted to discuss. Um, there's someone that I've known for a few months, um, this guy that we've, we've just been sort of friends, and a few weeks ago we decided to sort of move into a sexual relationship um, based on the understanding that it was not like dating or boyfriend and girlfriend. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> he decided to move into a sexual. Uh, Engineer Mike, I would like our relationship to move more into a sexual relationship. Well, it just sort of happened that way, and then we decided that it wasn't going to be a love relationship. We're not dating. He's not my boyfriend, and I don't want him to be. Right. Now, does he does he get to be in the room when you have sex? Sure. Okay. And you guys speak and everything during the act? Yeah, we go out together, and we have a really great time. We just understand, both of us understand that it's not boyfriend and girlfriend. All right. So what's now? now what's gone wrong? Well, Valentine's Day, we got together, and... Um, it's just Valentine's Day is a really bad day for me. Most holidays are really bad for me, and I was stressing, and we went out and got drunk. And when we got home, I was feeling kind of insecure. And so I just wanted – I asked him if, if we could just sort of – Cuddle? Be intimate. Yeah, I just wanted to have some emotional support. And he sort of freaked out at this, and ever since then, things have been really weird. Because he took that as sort of, a, uh, as, as sort of an emotional come on. Okay. Meaning, right. Is that right? Is that a question, Adam? Uh, a statement slash question. It's <laughs> can it be both? Yeah. I'm I'm guessing. All right, I'll make it a statement. He thought he had a purely physical thing going here, and when you said sometimes I just need to be held, he took that as sort of a uh oh, we're heading toward an emotional thing. Yeah, amazing. Amazing. But amazing they did, we, they could have the ultimate intimacy, but that's fine, no problem. But when she says, could you hug me? Oh, my God, sure. that's too much. I'll bang her for a while, but I draw the line at hugging. Okay, <laughs> well, I have some morals. Here's my question. Do I just sort of hang out and see if things can mellow out or just walk away from it? I think that you need to be more realistic about human relations. And I think when you get in and the level you guys are in, that it generates feelings that often are unanticipated. Okay, well, my, my feelings weren't based on him. They were based on old baggage, old emotions that I was feeling. Right. Like yes, you are a porter, baby. What's going on with the holiday problem? Oh, I hate holidays. Yes. They're, what? They're, yes. They're stressful. They're well, of course. What, what happened to you? Family. What happened to your family when you were holiday? When you're growing up? Well. um... Holidays when I was a kid were pretty good. It's just as I got older and started, um, oh, I don't know if it was having to to see that my family is is basically just really sick and twisted and and. Yes, except really for that, the holidays were great when I was a kid. They couldn't have been too good when you were a kid. Um, I don't remember them being specifically bad. My family didn't start falling apart until I got older. Okay, so there the, there were some problems, maybe some abuse. Um, well, yeah, sure. Okay, so you're having real intimacy problems. Uh-huh. I mean, you're having difficulty connecting to anybody mm-hmm. because because of what you're, because of your environment. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, here's how kids work. They get, and people work, they get broken early. I mean, like a, like a, like a watch. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, and, I mean, their spirit gets broken and they, they go, listen, I made a connection once. A long time ago with my parents, and they screwed me. So I'm not going to put myself in this vulnerable position again. And I right. know this is something we've discussed a million times. It's, it's psychology 101. But it keeps happening to a lot of people. So right. they go through life, and they don't want to connect. But, the, but it's never going to work because they end up connecting halfway. They got one foot in, they got one foot out, and they end up getting creamed. Well, or they end up connecting in the exact same circumstance that didn't work in childhood, which are circumstances that are doomed not to work in adulthood. So meaning if dad was an abusive alcoholic, they choose an abusive alcoholic to. In order to try to master it and work it out in adulthood when, in fact, the same outcome is what will prevail. And for whatever reason here, you know, you're setting yourself up with these relations. This is not a healthy way to conduct yourself in relations. Even though you think you're protecting yourself and being smart, no, no. Kristen? So just walk away? Get uh, uh, yeah. or get real with this guy. Have a relationship. I mean, no, no. no. I mean, I'm, I think I think you need to discuss this with a professional. Yeah. I mean, because he's probably a kind of guy that wouldn't wouldn't be able to, able to tolerate a real relationship. Yeah. Th- no, th- he's not, and that's why I don't. That's okay. One of the reasons right. I wouldn't want to have a relationship with him. Kirsten. Yeah. Wash your hands with this guy. Get some counseling. Stay away from guys for a little bit on any kind of serious level, and just. 
get your crap straightened out a little, get your antenna fixed a little, and then it, your reception will be better, and the picture will be a little clearer, and you'll be able to go out there and make wise decisions. Right now, any idea you come up with from a dating standpoint is probably going to be a bad one based on your past experience. That's true. You understand? That's true. It's not even coincidence that they're all bad. It is It is predestined that they're right. going to be bad. It's organic. It's organic. You see what I'm saying, Kirsten? Yeah. Get some counseling, talk it out, straighten it out, and then go out there and give it another crack. Okay, thanks. All right. But, you know, you know, the kind of treatment that somebody that needs is, is a relationship in therapy, and those take years to work out sometimes. A re- relationship with a the therapist? Yeah. I mean, that's what that is. therapy is, is reestablishing a real, honest relationship with a professional who knows how to manage that relationship. With what that about person. one of those weekends people can go away to, Drew, where they, <laughs> like, uh, you know, like they can go on one of these come-from-love cruises or something where they, uh, yeah. they go to Ensenada. <laughs> they eat at a buffet and they work it all out. Uh, By the time they get nice? back in, uh, to port, they're fine. Wouldn't that be nice if, if like a whole a whole lifetime of dysfunction could be ironed out in a weekend in Ensenada? That'd be great. <laughs> I've ironed out a few a, a, a few years of dysfunction, but actually, it was in Tijuana. I never did uh, make it to Ensenada. Was there ben. a Mexican prison or something? Yeah. Yes, I was, I, was, I, on? I was ironed out by the federales. Ben, real quick, you're on Love Line. Okay, Drew. Hey. What does the drainage consist of that comes out of the female when uh, she's ha- when we're having sex? Uh, well, there there are secretions from various glands down there. There's a transudative material, just sort of a, of a serous, we call it, material that comes out. And some women, if it seems excessive, actually will have urine. They have an, uh, orgasmic incontinence. I think there are traces of Bosco in there, too. <laughs> yeah, because she, tonight, she just flowed like... It felt like diarrhea or something. Oh. It was crazy. I had to clean up the floor and everything, and I was just curious if there's something wrong with that or what's No, it's wrong. not an uncommon thing. But okay. having to mop up after one has sex is probably not a good thing, is it? I mean, there's nothing wrong with, you know, you sleep in the wet spot or I'm going to put a towel over the wet spot or something, but actually having to call in a crew. Like, <laughs> if you got to get, like, a hazmat team in because you got a little nookie, that's a bad sign. Hi, this is Rodney Dangerfield. I'll tell you, the guys here at Loveline are the greatest. They're the best. The best in the whole world. Now, will you please untie me? All right, Rodney. This is Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. This is the phone number, 1-800-LOVE-191. The fax number, 310-854-4455. Fifty-five, and we're going back to the phones. Wendy, you're on Loveline. Hi. Hi. Okay, I know you guys were like teenagers once, and I'm 16. Now I skipped the, my yeah, teenage never years. To me. Yeah, Drew wasn't no, either. No, never happened. Drew went from 12 to 27. He'd actually already got his degree. Okay. Anyways, I've been seeing, well, kind of, sort of, this guy that's 19 right now, and um, the past couple days that we've been together. Um, when we were alone, he totally put all of his feelings into me and just told me I was the, the special thing in the whole wide world. Uh huh. And you know, but so he, he wanted sex. No, no. He he. In fact, he told me that like I, I'm still virgin. Thank you. Uh huh. Very much. By the way. All right. Oh, hold on. Oh. Well, in fact, he told you what? I'm feeling so special. He he said he was proud of me for keeping my virginity. Oh, nice tact. Crap. There's an angle. Okay. No, I bet you never heard that one before. Some some guy actually told me he was proud of me for being like a virgin instead of like criticizing me like every other like lame person in the world. Anyways, so like you know, I fully thought he was like into me, and I was like starting to like him. And I don't like 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 a lot, very many people at all. You know, I just like it's like that one person in like millions of years. Right. And so like the next day, he just totally told me, oh well, by the way, I hope you don't get hurt if like I'm with some other chick. Because, like, you know, we're not going out or anything, and we never were. And I never really, like, wanted to, like, you know, be with you, be with you. And I was, like, kind of, like, shocked. And All right. So l- let me just give a quick recap. You don't like, like, like too many guys. And, but this one But I this guy you, you like, like, like. A whole. And, and he wanted to be with you, but not be with you, be with you. <laughs> oh, God. You're lame. Okay. Yeah. 
so that's basically it. He he still wants to see me, he said, but he... No. Now, wait a minute. Does he want to see you or does he want to see you, see you? Or like see you, see you. Or like see you, see you. He doesn't want a relationship... <laughs> Let me see. If you like, like, like this guy, and and he and you want to see 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 him, but he doesn't want to be with you, be with you, <laughs> then you may have problems, problems. Right. Okay. I got it. Well, Thanks. He relationship with a boyfriend, girlfriend, quote and unquote thing, but he still wants to see me. But should I just is that quote or unquote see see you? Should I just like? Wait a minute. He wants to quote see you or or unquote see you see you. Like you know, like the whole relationship is in like. The one person, one on one thing. He doesn't want that, but like I do. Uh huh. And before I get too attached, I'm asking, do you think I should just kind of can him and forget about it? Now this isn't the son of uh, Boutros Boutros Galli, is it? Why? Why no? <laughs> I, to, I couldn't think of anybody who had the same first name twice. <laughs> one Boutros was not good enough. We must name him Boutros Boutros Galli because there's millions of other people running around named Boutros Galli. Yes. So should I just like totally forget about him or to see what it goes into or what? He says that I would make, he told me I like, I would make good girlfriend material, whatever the freaking heck that's supposed to be. Now, does he mean girlfriend or girlfriend? Let's not talk the double talk, please. I'm sorry I started it. But I just want to know, should I like stop like seeing him or should, do you think I should wait to see if it like grows into anything or what? I I think I think you should see him this Saturday Saturday for a date date. <laughs> and you should ride on a double decker bus and you should get a double scoop <laughs> scoop of ice cream and you guys should go see a double feature. And on the way back from the double feature, I think you should go over to uh, McDonald's and get yourself a Big Mac and a double order of fries. <laughs> I think you should like like quote unquote forget about this guy. Right. So I should just say the hell with him? Yes. Dump him, yes, him, yes. quote, and unquote. Save your virginity, TT. Oh, okay, K. Okay, K. When, when, D, D? <gasps> okay, K. Alrighty, alrighty. Alrighty. Oh, God. Now I've got a mother in law, father in law, mother in law. He's doing the doing the what polkas then, Michael? Metro polka. The metro polka. Oh man! All right, let's take a call. Call that's been on hold, hold for a long time. Nick, Nick. Hey. Hey. Hey, what's going on? Nothing. <laughs> like, I got this really good like problem. Mm. Uh huh. Like my girlfriend's like manic depressant and stuff, and like she like one day she'll be like you know like total like block off on me and like will ignore me and like. Won't even like say anything and like just pass me in the hall and won't say anything. And then next day she'll act like everything's like okay with me. She actually has manic depression. Yeah, she takes like Prozac and lithium. Okay. And and she's going to like therapy like twice a week. Right. And so like and then like she tries to make like everything's like okay and yeah tries to love me and everything mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. like it's totally like screwing with my head. Oh, hold on, Nick. Yeah. We're gonna take a look at the like tote board. Let's see. Oh, 27 times you have said the word like. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But he must have been dwarfed by uh, our previous caller. <clears throat> I don't know. I think these two would make a good couple. No. Yes. I'm just sort of nervous. Okay, I understand. Nick, you've got to understand that, that she's got an illness, and it's going to affect her mood. It's going to make her impulsive. It's going to make her seem labile and erratic, and uh, she can't Wait, contain what, that. What was that word? Labile. Labile? Moods are jumping around. Nick has used the word like 750 <laughs> times. Do you think he has any clue of the meaning of the word labile? I'm, that's why I'm glad you're here, Adam. I don't know um, what labile is. You, I just told you. I wasn't paying attention. Indeed, did you weren't. The mood jumping around. Extreme okay. variability. And All right. Instability let's, let's of mood. Let's drop labile out of there. Smart All right. Guy. And, uh, you know, it, it's the way it is, and you can either deal with it or not. And it's it's not a healthy thing for a 14-year-old necessarily to be involved with somebody who has emotional illness. It, it's great that you can support her. I hope you can maintain a relationship with her. But uh, this relationship may not survive her illness right now. It may not be a good time for her to be in a relationship if her illness is in, unstable. So you should, like, get out of the relationship. Chris. Well, like, be careful. <laughs> it was like talking. I said like, too. It was, it was the same. 
is talking to uh, uh, Shaggy from Scooby Doo. <laughs> or, or Bob Denver from the uh, Dobie Gillis series. Chris. Yes. I'm all full of analogies, and no one like knows what the hell like I'm talking about tonight. Well, you I can... do, but Thank I you. have a question for Dr. Drew. Yeah, yeah Chris. Chris. All right. My girlfriend, um, who I've been dating for quite a while, and um, we've had sexual intercourse and relations, um, she's had irregular periods in the past, and this past month was quite a scare because it was 42 days before... Um, between her period periods and um she did in fact have her period but i'm wondering what is the reason behind this i mean what what possible reasons could this be it could be just her and it's normal for her <laughs> kind of it could be her it could be just, it's the, her. just the way she is normally it doesn't have to be a oh, medical okay. problem it, it actually, they they coined a term hypothalam, hypothalamic pituitary axis dysfunction. It just means her brain and her hormonal system isn't precisely timed. That's all. And and that's it, that's it, normal for her. And, you know, she may be somebody who's sensitive to all kinds of input. Again, some women, just the fear that they might get pregnant is enough to hold their periods out for quite some time. And if wow. you guys were stressing about that, that's enough to make her periods be late. Did you freak out for the, those 12 or 15 days? I sure did. Did yeah. you guys spend uh, thousands of dollars on home pregnancy tests? No, no, but uh, I, I was re- she, she assured me that she wasn't. But, yeah, there are other things, endometriosis, ovarian cysts. Uh, you know, there are all kinds of other things, that uh, you know, rare birds that can do this. But if she is seen regularly and things appear to be normal and she's otherwise not yeah. having any symptoms, then don't. Worry about it, okay? Okay. All right. Thanks. All right. Uh, now, now I've gotten to the whole. Yeah. Okay. Real fast, Todd. Adam. Hey. Dr. Drew. Yes. Todd. Long time listener, first time caller. Great. Um, Adam, I need your help here. Okay. Talk to me. Uh, yes. Um, let me set the scene. Um, I've been going out with a uh, lady for eight years now. Mm-hmm. Been engaged for a year. Mm-hmm. Lived with her for almost a year. Wait, you went out with her for eight years? Yeah. Since you were 16. High school sweetheart. Wow. Yeah. And you've lived together for a year. We've lived together for a year now. Yes. You've been engaged for a year. I've been engaged for a year. So you got engaged, you moved in. Yep. Okay. Okay. Need your help on this one. Okay. Um, this, what goes on in the bedroom. Yes. Um, very good sex. Very right. Good. Um, but is, it, is that a general statement, or are you guys saying you're having good sex? Um... It's not like caveman, like, mm, good sex. No, no, I think... Uh, I think you two are having good sexual relations. Yeah, very good. Okay, what's the um, problem? One drawback. Mm-hmm. I like oral sex. Sure. I like, I like it performed on me. What, are you nuts? No. Okay, um, go ahead. Maybe I'm a little bit abnormal, but... No, I, you're not. I like it performed on me, and, and, and I perform it on her all the time. Right. You know, I go down there, do what I got to do, and don't leave until she's satisfied. What, what are you, a plumber? I take care. Well, I take care of her needs. I go down there. I do what I gotta do. Yeah, you know, and and uh, she's satisfied when I'm done. And, but uh, what I need here is I need need some help on how I can arrange or put together some kind of words of what I can say to her without um, without making her mad or right. You don't want to offend her. On, on how to on for her to perform. Right. All right. Listen, Todd. Todd. You don't want to offend her, but your penis has needs. What's that? Your penis. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. has needs. It's my needs, yeah. That's right. Yes. Yes. But, but I don't want to, you know, I don't want to offend her or anything. And I, you know, she'll go down there every so often and, and do something, but she just kind of dabbles with the end. You know, it doesn't really. You know, <laughs> dabbles. Doesn't really, you know, it doesn't really do what I want done. And, and I don't want to. I dabble in penis yeah, with a major in testicles. Uh, Todd? Yeah. Put her on the phone. Uh, she's in bed. Wake her up, put her on the phone. Uh-uh. That ain't going to happen. <laughs> yeah, you're scared. She, all right, so she she's ruling the roost over there. Um, yes. Um, she um, has your testicles hanging from her rear view, Todd. When it comes to the bedroom scene, yeah, kind of it's uh, what she wants and what she wants only, you know, when it comes into the bedroom. You know? All right, listen. First off, 
get out of the bedroom, get into the kitchen, and and, and do it because right. that you've jinxed the bedroom now, Todd. Do you understand? Well, I've often it suggested other rooms in the house, and she says no, you know this and that. All right, listen, Todd. Yeah. This is only going to get worse. You're not even married yet. I know, so that's why I want to cure this now, and I know you're the man to tell me. I am the man, and so are you. And don't forget that. I ain't gonna. I want you to get a T-shirt. I want you to write, "I'm the man" on it, I'm but write it backwards so when you look in the mirror, you can read it. I'm the man. I'm the man. So it doesn't, you know, otherwise it'll say, ma'am, my, the, something like that. So you got to write it backwards. The point is, it's not, you are the man, and women want you to act accordingly. They may not, they, Anne, Anne is giving me a smile, but she knows. She gets hot when I talk this way. You want your man to act like a man. Yeah. You don't want to say, could I have a little of this? No one wants to hear someone panhandle for sex. Could you spare, oh, can, uh, ma'am, could you spare a blowjob? Like when she's walking into a 7-Eleven, a uh, uh, bl- blowjob for the needy. Oh, oh okay, uh, I'll, I'll catch you on the way out. No. So oh, how do what? I break it to her? How do I break it I'll to her? I'll tell you how you break it to her. You break tell her, listen, you tell her sex is about mutual gratification. That your interest in sex is to make her feel good and to give her pleasure. And if her goal is the same thing for you, then it all works out. Because you're trying to please her, she's trying to please you, and together you got one big sweaty pile of pleasing. Oh, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But if she doesn't like to do it, then she's not going to do it. Yeah, but she can do it. I mean, he's not yeah, asking not her to quit her job purpose? and blow him. She's saying once in a while. I'm trying to meet halfway here. I'm saying, you know, every so often, you know. I well, you said she does it every so often. But it's just, it's kind of playing around at the end. It ain't like the whole show. It's like a little bit, and then she comes Have you to told her what you like? What's that? Have you told her what you like? Well, I've tried to, but I don't want to. What do you mean, tried? Well, I kind of suggest this and that. And All right, here's what you do. You, 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 you train her like a dog. You put a treat at the end of it. You, you You're put a like pig, a Adam. you put like a You're powder. A total pig. Does she like donuts? Oh, I hope you God. never get another blow job again in your life. Oh, okay. and the next one I guess gonna be from you. She likes Can't eggs. wait. Uh, I say take a powdered donut, put it all the way down to the bottom, and tell her to fetch. I'm gonna try it. <laughs> and send those letters to Loveline. Well, we're getting there. This is Loveline, 1-800-LOVE-191. The fax number, 310-854-4455. We'd like to thank uh, legendary Stan Lee for coming in tonight and sharing his little bits of wisdom with us. Who we got tomorrow night? We have the uh, folks from Days of Our Lives, Sammy, Carey, and Austin. Fascinating. Never... uh, Never a guy's name like Herschel <laughs> and like uh, Shlomo, Shlomo, Alfonso, Austin. I like when the guys in soap operas have names like um, Dex Dexter and stuff like that. You know, and actually, well, it's kind of that Boutros Boutros galley thing. Jennifer, yeah, you're on Love Line. Hi. Hey. Um. Okay. I'm, like, freaking out. You guys are going to die. Oh, let's, okay. let's get that like tally going again. All right. <laughs> Wait a minute. Let me spot you five. I'm starting from here. Go ahead. The uh, Jennifer like tally. Go ahead. Like, like, okay, we were heading. I, with my sister and my best friend, lived together. They're roommates. Mm-hmm. Okay. Best friend's a girl. And Hold on. I'm starting a K column, too, by the way. All right. How there we they? go. How old are they? 21 and 22. All right. All right. Your sister and your best friend are shacked up. Yes. Yeah, and I was supposed to meet them at their house because we were heading off to this Bob Marley concert tonight. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like walking up the stairs, open the door, not thinking like anything's gonna happen, mm-hmm. and I catch them kissing, and I just freaked out and turned around and left. And did, I'm sure they heard me. They didn't see me. They did not see you. No, I don't think they. No, they didn't see me. But they heard you. I'm sure they did. And I'm like not at the concert right now. All right, right. four. I think there's a half like in there's like a look <laughs> thrown in there. All right, so they saw you saw them kissing. Yes. And it, yes. I don't know. They had like separate rooms and everything. Was it a house. friendly kiss or was it something? No, like... they were like tongue and everything. They were like, kissing. <laughs> it was crazy and like I like no both of them like I've known my best friend for like ever, and they've never like. <laughs> You guys are laughing at me. You no. broke. You broke the register. I broke the register. Yes. Uh, 
Okay, so what are you feeling? Are you are you repulsed or? Yes, because I don't know. They've never had like little lesbian thoughts or whatever, and then I, I don't know. Are, are you? And they really didn't even talk. They just like decided to move in like all of a sudden. I don't know. It's crazy. What, what, how do you plan to handle this? How am I? Yeah. I don't know. That's why I called asking. I that. say you fire tear gas into the place and rush the joint like it was Antebi. Well, I think you probably would be most comfortable talking to your friend, I suspect. What am I going to say? Say. Yeah, I walked in and saw you kissing my sister. And it, and it, and it freaks me out. Oh, what? And make me understand this. Help me understand this. Uh, you know what? What? Do you want us to help them understand this? I think you do, Jennifer. <laughs> Jennifer? What? I'm going to put you on hold. Okay. You're going to talk to the lovely, vivacious Sherry. Okay. You're going to give her the phone number of your sister's place and her and her golf-playing friend. And we're going to talk some sense into these ladies. Okay. We're, we're not going to discourage them from their activities, but we're going to get it out in the open. We're going to get it off your chest. Right. And we're going to have open dialogue about this. And when we're done, everyone is going to feel better. Okay. Okay. Really? She really went right along with that. <laughs> I was completely surprised. Take the easy one. No, we're going to take the tough one. All right. Jeff. Yeah. You're on Loveline. How's it going, guys? It's going well. All right. Listen, I was just sitting here listening to the radio, and I started uh, I started thinking. Um, me and my friend Anthony were talking to, uh, we we're talking with our friend Julio, and we we're just horsing around, and Julio insists that. One time when he was having sex with this girl, after he came, he, he began to urinate inside of her. And we, we told him that couldn't happen, but he insists that it did. Well, I guess it's a matter of time. I mean, you, you can't do it kind of instead of, can you, Drew? I mean, there's a valve. You're right. It's the, thank God I got that valve valve, I think it's called. Well, that's what we told him, but he said that he just, like, kept it going. <laughs> well, now that's possible because, as you know, you you can have sex and then waddle waddle into the bathroom and relieve yourself with this, not unlike that, with the same erection you were using to pleasure your gal pal moments earlier. Then how come it's so hard to, like, to tap a kidney when you have morning wood? Tap a kidney. It's, it's hard. It's it like is like tapping a keg. It, it's hard to. Uh, it's hard for me even to imagine that that's uh, likely to have happened. But I suppose it's possible. I guess if it, if it took a little while. And here, let me ask you a question, Drew, about uh, on the urination uh, topic. Sometimes when I take a, a whiz in a, but only in a public place, mm -hmm. or not a, necessarily a public place, but only when someone's around. Right. Like if I'm like at Dodger Stadium, I'm taking a whiz in the trough there. Mm -hmm. Or I'm at home, but there's someone in the bathroom with me, mm. like my grandparents or something. No, I mean like like you know a girl or something like that, or the guy who, you know whoever shaved my ass that that week. I shiver. I get the shivers. Huh. Do you get the shivers? No. But, what but, is, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, you the, you pee and you go. The end, at the end of urination, there there are uh, the stimulation of the vagus nerve and whatnot. People, some people pass out right right then too. So it's probably something to do with that. Well, I'm glad I shiver. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, pass out and hit my yeah. head on the side yeah, of it's the, the... post-micturation syncope. Really? Yeah. Pass out. Yeah. And smack your head right on the trough. Yeah. <sighs> oh, wait a minute. I, I uh, made another one of my classic blunders. Jennifer. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. She's not around? She's not. All right. If people don't know who Jennifer is, we spoke to her about three minutes ago. Her sister, her older sister... Her sister's old enough to make her own decision, sister. And her best friend, who are shacked up, are having, an les uh, having a lesbian relationship. All of a sudden. Right. Oh. Or as far as you know, all of a sudden. Anyway. Maybe both of them are straight as an arrow and think they're both going to get a break on the rent if they can. <laughs> Could that be it? Well, you need to talk to them. Whichever you, whichever one you are most comfortable with, sit down and just tell them how you feel. and let, Give her an opportunity to tell her you what's going on. Yeah, and don't expect and, them to stop if they if yeah, they enjoy I mean, they, each right, other. They're adults, and this is what they're choosing to do, and uh, you need to kind of learn to accept that that's who they are. But, Drew, and this is something I de we talk about double standards all the time on this show. This is definitely a double standard, I think, in favor of the women. 
because this situation, if it was like my best buddy yeah. and my brother, which I don't have, but hypothetically, let's say I had a brother. Yeah. This would freak me out. Do you do you have a brother? No. All right. But so again, hypothetically. Right. Could you imagine having a brother and your best buddy and walking in on them, knowing they're getting it on, living together? That'd be a little weird. That would be real weird. Did you ever want an older brother, Drew? No. You never wanted. You never want that guy who was like four years older, and he no. was like the captain of the football team. And in high school, everyone knew him, and he had his own bachelor pad. And you know your, what and I'm he saying? Takes your best friend, to and it. you could take your girl over there, and everything. And he was really cool, and he he owned his own construction outfit, and gave you work during the summer. You know? No. No. All right. That was. But, okay. but I, I'm I'm really trying to imagine what that would feel like, and. Uh, I want to believe that I wouldn't be that freaked out by it. But, yeah, I suppose it, it, it's a tough thing for guys to deal with. We'll be back with more gay talk after this. <laughs> oh, the show's love line. I'm Adam. Adam. Who are you? I up my own name. Drew and I were just talking about Are you like, like, Adam? Or? I'm like, like, Adam Carolla, and Thank that you. is like, like, Drew, Drew. And uh, Engineer Mike, what happened to the register sound effect? Did, did you break the bank? It, like, broke. What? That was funny the way it petered out. There, it was like the drawer got stuck. You ever do that when you go to the, you go to, like, the thrifties, and they punch, 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 and the drawer doesn't open, and they punch, 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 and the drawer doesn't open? <laughs> All right, I got another thing to say, because we're not going to the phones, because we have, like, just a little bit of time left in the show, and, like, Drew is going to give the email address out in just, like, one second. But I was watching the public access TV today, Mm -hmm. Channel 25, where Mm -hmm. I am, and I love that because it's the blue backdrop, it's the bad furniture, and it's the plastic fern plant that's in the corner, and I love, I I just love everything about public access. (laughs) They had a psychic oh. on, psychic woman. And the psychic women are always the same way. Little heavy set and real bad hair. And usually a little something funky going on with the fingernails, too. <laughs> but here's the other thing I've learned about psychics, both men and, and women. Cannot dress to save their lives. Psychics are the worst dressers in the world. They really are. I mean, you name me a well-dressed psychic. You cannot find one. And I thought, I mean, this woman was wearing, it looked like a zebra v- uh, vomited on her. She was wearing this, like, multicolored mess of a thing, and she had this big, fat necklace on with big old big old beads on it. And I couldn't believe it. And I thought, now, if you really were psychic, certainly you could look into, like, just a few months ahead to see what would be coming out in the fall or something, at least in this decade, and get some fashion. Am I right that psychics are the worst right. dressed people on the planet? How about that guy that had that sort of white Brillo wig? Remember that guy? Did you ever meet that guy? Spivey. What's Spivey. His yeah. And he dressed like George Washington sort of or a, or a, a red coat in the British Army during the Revolution. Yeah. It was like, like one of the, uh, Paul Revere and the Raiders right. or something like that. Yeah. Why are psychics all whacked out? I would, I would tend to believe a psychic if they came in wearing a suit. With the women, you know, the women psychics could wear, like, some sensible slacks and a blouse or some, something believable. But they're always wearing some whacked-out jewelry. And some, and the guys are wearing, like, these, these Afghans or these, you know, ju- judicial robes. What the hell is that? I don't know. Psychics, if you can hear me, look into the future. No, but no, forget. Look into your closet. Or look into the gap, would you, and get some get some apparel. If anybody would like to write to us or uh, follow up on that lovely comment, uh, Love Line at P.O. Box 4345, Hollywood, California, 90078. P.O. Box 4345, Hollywood, 90078. Or our email address, LUV191 on America Online. We would like to thank Stan Lee for coming in tonight. Make sure and watch the uh, Generation X at 8 o'clock on Fox tomorrow night. And speaking of tomorrow night, Days of Our Lives crew will be in there. Until then, thank you, James, Sherry, Ann, Mike, Adam Carolla. Dr. Drew. And we'll talk to you tomorrow night. If you are still listening, you may feel the urge to touch yourself. So that's it, then. Uh, 
opinions expressed on Loveline by Adam Carolla, Dr. Drew, or anyone are not necessarily ours. Be happy. Be happy. Happy, happy, happy. I'm happy. Loveline's producer is Ann Wilkins. Thank you. <laughs>